Hey, Mike Mata here. We had talked previously about the DLC header and some of the sub layers, things that you may see. Today, with TCP IP and the data link layer, there's really only one hex value that we're looking for, and that's the ether type field. And again, that carries in hex 0800, defining IP as the next upper layer protocol in its IP version 4. However, TCP IP does not define any of the lower layer processes required to transport this information across the physical network. So the data link layer today can be split into two sublayers. So why they're called MAC addresses, the media access control sublayer, and then the logical link control sublayer. So in today's networks you will find both and and most common again is the version 2 uh, where there is no LLC but we're going to talk about the different frame formats here the data link layer if we think about what is the main task of the data link layer that is to move data from the network layer to the physical layer and the physical layer is we're just moving bits ones and zeros between my NIC and your NIC and whether that be your NIC the sitting in the server or your NIC sitting in the default gateway to talk off of our local subnet and then we're moving those bits in what are called frames and we talked previously about that the frame information in the DLC header so the Mac and LLC in, in our Ethernet networks today, we don't have to worry about token ring or FDDI or any of those old school networks anymore. Everything today is Ethernet and pretty much everything today is full duplex. But in the not too distant past, there was shared media, which used CSMA CD, Carrier Sense Multiple Access Collision Detection. And we shared the, the medium with other devices and that protocol that determined who could transmit was the MAC control or medium access control protocol. Today pretty much CSMA CD is no longer in use because most devices are full duplex. Now not necessarily so there you go. Again the MAC protocol is implemented at the MAC sublayer and that is if you think about the the network interface card, that's the, the MAC address, NIC address, and then the sublayer that sits on top of that is the logical link control, and then that may talk to the network layer. So it starts with a frame, and again our version 2 frame that we talked about in the previous segment had an ether type field. That type field is always greater than 0, 05 DC in hex and I'll let you figure out what 05 DC in hex is in decimal. So the first six bytes destination address, next six bytes source and then again the two byte type field, four bytes at the end of the frame, CRC cyclical redundancy check to protect the contents of the frame. Now preamble technically is not part of the frame. Preamble alternating 101010 is used for clocking so we can figure out what is the speed that we are receiving the data at. 10 meg, 100 meg, gigabit, you know 10 gigabit per second. So preamble is used to figure out clocking. The second frame format that you may encounter in your environment, especially if you're running spanning tree, uh, you'll definitely see this particular frame. The standards committee got involved, 802.3 standards committee, and they came up with a frame format that same two bytes, but instead of being the type field, it is now called the length field. So lengths will always be less than or equal to 0, 05 DC in hex. And then what follows is a three or four byte LLC header. And that three or four bytes determines whether or not it's connection oriented or connection lists. So the first byte is the destination service access point. Next byte, source service access point. And the next byte is one or two bytes. And typically today it's one. One byte of control 
is used for connection-less LLC frames. I haven't seen connection-oriented LLC in quite a while. Where that was used previously was in an SNA environment or a net buoy environment where we would encapsulate net BIOS in LLC. Pretty much those protocols are gone and we now, you know, encapsulate net BIOS in TCP or SNA in TCP. So pretty much the only thing you'll probably run into in your environment today is connectionless LLC and again spanning tree. We'll take a look at that coming up. The snap frame format, the third, you'll see snap frames, Cisco Discovery Protocol, a lot of the new protocols use snap. Uh, it sets the DSAP and SAP to AA, Apple, Apple, and then one byte of control, always hex 03. And then we add five more bytes, three bytes of manufacturer ID, which we have seen before in the source and destination MAC addresses. First three bytes is the manufacturer ID and the two byte ether type, which we also saw before in the version two frame format. So the fourth and final is the Novell frame format. It uses FFFF, the IPX checksum at offset 14. And again, typically you will not see these packets any longer. This was back in the heyday of Novell when they had IPX SPX. Uh, pretty much they're gone for today. So let's take a look at these in a protocol analyzer. So here we'll take a look at, at that version 2 Ethernet frame. Again, if you recall, we, we said that offset 12 there in, in decimal 0800 says we're carrying IP version 4. So there it is. 0800 offset 12 says we're carrying IP version 4. We see the IP header that follows. Again, our protocol field there, 0800 in hex, that defines IP as the next upper layer protocol. 08 greater than 05 DC in hex, which makes this a version 2 Ethernet frame. And again, this is the most common frame that you will see in your environment. You use Wireshark or Observer or Sniffer or any protocol analyzer, you'll see this is the most common frame because IP, TCP IP, was architected to run on this version 2 Ethernet frame. So that's the most common one. You'll see ARP also. ARP, same uh, concept here. See 0806 offset 12 again 08 greater than 05 DC makes it a version 2 Ethernet frame. So some of the other frames we said if you are running spanning tree in your environment and there's a spanning tree frame let's take a quick peek at that one. Spanning tree you can see at offset 12 it is now the size and the size is 38 bytes. And if we look at the value there, less than 0.5 DC, which 26 in hex, you should know, is 38 in decimal. That's where that's coming from. And then we said what follows is our DSAP, 42, SAP, 42, so destination service access point, source service access point, and then again that 42 defines it as spanning tree or bridge protocol data unit. And then one byte of control, and that one byte of control, hex 03, and that is our unnumbered format. So if we highlight the control, you notice that highlights the hex 03 there for us, and we know it's one byte of control, and it tells us it's unnumbered, so meaning you know, it's it's not a connection-oriented LLC packet. That's really about as far as I want to go in a spanning tree. Radia Perlman wrote the spanning tree protocol. She has a great book if you want to know everything there is to know about it. It's called Interconnections 2 is the latest version. Um, I would encourage you to go get her book if you want to know everything there is to know about spanning tree protocol. Uh, let's go take a look and see. 
we should have some there we go Cisco protocol in here Cisco DTP if we take a look at this particular packet you notice that it is um, same 0, 0, 0022 at offset 12 which tells us it's less than 0, 05 DC or that's our length field and let's actually break this down a little further in the detail window so we can even see some of this other information um, destination address here is a zero one which that tells us this is a going to a multicast it's an odd number in the MAC address I will do a segment on that here coming up source address is from an even number which makes it a unique so this is a Cisco sending out to a multicast destination address and again it's using a snap frame so we see AA AA so there's our DSAP and SAP Apple Apple again our 03 which tells us it's a unnumbered format and then the next three bytes is the manufacturer ID 00000C and we even see observer decodes that and says that's Cisco and then the ether type the next two bytes 2004 defines the protocol as Cisco DTP. 2000 would be Cisco Discovery Protocol. So, again, all these different ether types defining what's the next upper layer protocol. So, there are the three most common frame formats that you will see. And again, Wireshark shows very similar, uh, shows it very similar as, as far as the same way. Here we see, uh, let's minimize that, and in Wireshark, so here's frame 1, Ethernet version 2, highlights the first 14 bytes. Again, you see 0800 there in hex. Uh, tells us our IP protocol type field. Version 2, then we kind of know that's the version 2 based on that Ethernet II. If we go down and, and look for a spanning tree frame, here's an STP. Again, we looked at that in Observer. Our length 38 bytes or 0026. Again, tells us our length is, is, is 38 bytes. And then we see the <clears throat> LLC header and it tells us the DSAP. And SAP is 42 and 42, so it's breaking down this information and where it's getting it from and how to decode the particular packet information. And then 03, again 42, 42, 03, it's unnumbered information. And let's go look at that other Cisco snap frame. And again, we see very similar, like Observer decoded it. 0022 tells us that's our, our frame length information, length of 34, 0022. Then AA is our DSAP. AA, our SAP. And then 03, unnumbered. So one byte means connectionless. And then the next three bytes is our OUI or organizationally unique identifier. And then the next two bytes defines the ether type, or in this case, the, the protocol of Cisco DTP. So there are the three different most common frame formats that you will encounter in your network. And again, there's really not much troubleshooting you're going to do with this other than obviously spanning tree would tell us if you're having lots of spanning tree packets uh, you could be having a network loop again I don't want to get into how to figure that out today I would encourage you to, to get Radia Perlman's interconnections book but there are techniques that we can use to, to see how often those spanning tree packets are coming from an interface and again most most common is every two seconds unless we're doing rapid spanning tree and then that's every second and then based on those timers we can figure out you know potentially is there some kind of a loop in the network but that's how we use that frame information and, and how we break out 
what this information in both analyzers tells us. The first, you know, 14, 16 bytes of the frame, depending upon what is the frame format. So I hope that was informational, and thanks a lot.